It's lovely to have you on the Lauren Hope Glory Show. This is my <laughs> own show now. You see, they let me have a show. <laughs> Lauren let me have a show at long last. <laughs> Absolute pleasure to be on, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a chat with you tonight, Lauren. And so thanks so much for inviting me along. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, we've been communicating on and off on Messenger, and you've always been very kind about my tarot readings because you're a but, yeah. I, I watched the one this morning that you that you sent me, and um, once again, it was spot on. Oh my god, that's so exciting! That's so exciting. Did, did you watch the one that I did uh, for the spiritual workers as well? That's really, really good. It's to help us stay strong regardless of the madness. So. I've got I've got that on my list of things to watch. I, I, it's just, it's just I'm sent so much stuff that at the moment. It's impossible to watch. <laughs> Well, from what I remember from the tarot reading I did for Taurus, there was a lot going on with Taurus. Yeah. A lot of trouble, some kind of trouble and stuff like that going on. And you needed to take back, from what I remember, take back your emperor, put your foot down, tough luck. And, Is that and, right? <laughs> and he would only said at one stage from memory, yeah, it was upside yeah. down. It was. Everything was upside down, which is basically the opposite. But, but, but no, what, what I read into that was that um, <laughs> for the past few months, I've been really positive, really optimistic, really calm within myself, yeah? And, and really standing in my power. Um, however, probably the last week or so, um, I've, I've had a little bit of a dip. Um, but I'm coming out of that now. So it, it was really significant that you, uh, that you sent me that. Uh, I think you sent it on Friday, but I didn't watch it till this morning. So oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I love it. You know, I, I mean, I've learned how to actually shuffle now and I can't stop doing that. I think I'm addicted. Yeah. <laughs> love it. I know, I know in your video, <laughs> you've learned to shuffle just as you drop the pack of cards. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going to have a nice little chat today, but let's start from the beginning. Let's go right back to the beginning. So you like okay. to give yourself an empowerment coach. Is that right? Um, yeah, for want of a better phrase, yeah. I, I love, um, people are my biggest passion in life. People are my biggest interest. People fascinate me. And um, I've been through some pretty high highs and some pretty low lows in, in my life, uh, my own life. And um, I've learned a lot more during the low lows than I ever did during the high highs, yeah? And um, I've developed a really good understanding of who I am. And I've been through a whole range of experiences, emotions in my life, uh, circumstances, um, some addictions as well. Which uh, you mentioned addictions, uh, and not on a number of uh, a number of times in your in your in your reading. Um, that's given me a really good understanding of myself. So, and I believe that we're we're all different, but we're all the same. So, I believe I've got a good understanding of. Uh, of other people, of, of people generally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, you know, I've, I've had some pretty bad experiences in, in, in life. Uh, a lot of them self-induced. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I feel I can relate to people, empathise with people. Mm -hmm. And if I can help, help anybody to grow a little bit and to become more empowered, to shine a little bit more brightly, that's the biggest buzz that I get in life. Yeah, I agree. It's so beautiful when you see someone taking their power back and changing their life, and we call it waking up, but it's really just about taking that power back and saying, I have a right to, to have a better life. I have a right to, 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 to have a better world to live in. So Absolutely. I agree with uh, you totally. I love what that. A time, what a time at the moment to take back our power, right? Eh? Mm. What so a time. I think more and more people have stepped into their power over the past few weeks and months. 
it is so painful to live at the moment this is this is i feel it's in some ways it's the most painful time we're living in and yet it's the most enlightening time because as i said the only way you can come through into gesara and asara and all that good stuff is you've got to go through all the pain and you've got to bring it all up you can't yep. create a beautiful world in the mess that we've got at the moment it'll just collapse you know yeah. there's no point so uh, it's an i think it's an amazing time to be alive at the moment because i, I think it's i don't think i'm exaggerating here to say it's it's the most pivotal period in human history mm. exactly because we are uncovering everything that held us back. I mean, I don't know if you know much about me, but I grew up in Israel. Wars, terrorism. Um, I was born in Ireland. They took me to Israel at seven years old. This story of my life, as far as I'm concerned, obviously spiritually, no, but as a child. And um, it, it, this is what they did. This is what they did to children. This is what they did to the world. They, they turned us in. They just took our world and they did whatever they wanted to do with it. But now... For the first time, we understand who, the, who this is, what this element is, and we can, we can actually do something about it because you talked about addictions. You cannot get over an addiction if you're in denial. The minute you come out, the first step, I am totally powerless over this mad world. <laughs> That's the only way you can start to heal. So, I want to speak to you. So you're in lovely Birmingham at the moment, but let's... Can, can, you, can you tell about Birmingham? <laughs> yeah. How far I, back can we go? How far back would you like to go? To stop? Say again. Where do you come from, Mike Shinton? Where do I come from? Yeah, wh who are you? Where do you come from? Um, <laughs> actually, I'm, I, 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 although I live in Birmingham now, I'm not from Birmingham originally, I'm from the black country now. And anybody who lives locally will know that's a big distinction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was born just outside Wolverhampton. Um, I've, I'm 63 now. I know it's hard to believe. Um, <laughs> and um, I've, had a, I've had an interesting life. Um, but possibly the last 20 years have been the most interesting. Um, let, actually, let me go back to when I was six or seven. Yeah. Just yeah, that. thank you. And I, I believe I had one of the most profound thoughts that I've ever had when, I, I can't remember, but say I was about seven. And um, my parents were, I had a great set of parents, great, great parents, you know, they were both lovely. Um, I was very lucky. Uh, they were both churchgoers, both churchgoing Christians, and they used to take me along to church and Sunday school every week, every Sunday. And um, I remember when I was about, it'd be about seven, looking up inside church, and thinking to myself, if I was God, I wouldn't be like this. I couldn't understand, I couldn't, no, I couldn't comprehend a God that needed constant praise, that was so insecure, that, you know, he, and it always was a he, needed constant praise. Um, I couldn't understand a God that had the ability to, uh, to heal, but didn't. Um, I couldn't understand a God that judged. And I couldn't understand a God that, you know, could maybe, if I stepped out of line, could maybe to send me, send me to hell for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. Made no sense. With the book and, and decides, this old man that sits in the sky with the book. And yeah. It's bad, you go to hell. Yeah, yeah. That's the same upbringing as the Jews. Yeah. And I still think that's possibly the most profound thought I've ever had at the age of seven. Right. But I went, I went completely away from religion. Um, but I always knew there was something else. And uh, it wasn't until my life came tumbling down in the late 90, 1990s, uh, you know, I really did hit rock bottom, um, that things started to change for me and things started to appear in my life. Um, once I'd learned the most, probably the most significant lesson I've ever learned was gratitude. Um, and I learned gratitude, and I learned the power of gratitude when I'd got, I'd got less in my life than I'd ever had before. Um, I'd gone bankrupt, um, I'd hit the bottle a bit too hard, um, I'd lost most of the people I, uh, I held dear, and uh, I'd got very little left in my life. But in that moment, I learned to focus on the things that I'd, I had got, rather than resenting the things that I hadn't got, which is the way I previously lived my life, 
but I learned to focus on the things that I had got and be truly, truly grateful for them. And it was as though somebody had flicked a switch in my life and I started to attract people and things that I needed to grow and move on. Right. So nobody will ever convince me that gratitude is not the most attractive force in the universe because I know from personal experience it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was given three other lessons at that time as well, which, uh, which I tried to live by uh, and mostly succeed, but sometimes fail. And uh, the second one was, was honesty and not just honesty about, you know, where I was going and what I was doing to get honest about who I really was and who I really want to be. Um, and that, in, that involved a lot of introspection and, you know, but by doing that, I found things within me that I didn't realize that I'd got. So honesty was my second lesson. Um, the third one was, uh, was humility. Um, because I'd, I'd lived in arrogance and I used to consider humility as a weakness. I know now that humility is possibly the greatest strength. And humility to me means that uh, I can laugh at myself, which I think is really important to be able to laugh at yourself. And I know you can. <laughs> I see you doing it all the time. The I think... <laughs> Comedy, yeah. I can laugh at myself. I can say I'm wrong. I can say I'm sorry. Um, but what it really means is that I don't see anybody, well, I hope I don't, I, I don't see anybody above me or below me. We're all equal. We're all the same, but we're all different. But we're all equal. Oh. And the fourth lesson I got, and I, I've had many, many more lessons since, but these were the first four, um, was, uh, was service or giving. Because I'd, I'd always got into every situation in my life, be it you know, business, career, relationships from a perspective of what can I get from this and look where he got me <laughs> so I just switched that round and, and try, I tried to go into everything from a perspective of what can I give what value can I, can I be mm -hmm. and again that is so empowering Incredible. so you were more or less very spiritual then from quite a young age I mean imagine a child already coming to such conclusions about God. I mean, it took me a while. Um, I used to go to the synagogue, you know, and we'd go there and I'd sit there and read, thank you, God, for making me the chosen people and suffering. <laughs> I thought, hang on a second. I said, what? <laughs> no, I, I don't like that. I'm, 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 I'm not, not hearing you a bit faintly at the moment. Sorry, you can't hear me. I, I can, I, that's better now. Yeah. Okay. As a, um, as a child, I used to go to the synagogue, you know, we go to synagogue and I remember reading in the prayer book, thank you God for making me the chosen people and making me suffer. And I, I thought, no, I don't like that. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I don't like that at all. But then I'd say that my biggest awakenings as a young teenager before, you know, the army and everything was because we studied history. History was a big thing for me. I loved it. And I remember we were given this exercise about wars and we had to go off and figure out what led to, you know, how did a war happen? And you could see that one law, one war led to another, to another, to another. And it was, yeah. I figured that out at a very young age that there's something wrong here that you need to change, you know, or else there's going to be another one, another one, and another one. So, my upbringing was my my um, upbringing was very much around that kind of thing, around wars and and Israel and continuous continuous bombardment of wars and terrorism. So as soon as I was old enough, I, I hated Israel. I got back, I came back to England, and it was just amazing to be able to get up and and in the middle of the night and not be scared. Because and, and what, what age were you then? Or, pardon? What age were you then when you came back to, to the UK? I came back when I was about 20, 22, I think. After okay, the uh, about 15 years ago then, yeah? That was what? About 15 years ago. 10 years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but coming back to what you were saying, so, you know, spiritual awakening seemed to, you started to wake up obviously very, very young. As, as a very young kid. So um, 
but as as we progress through what we've been seeing you know in the last couple of months in particular since the lockdown what were your feelings when when they locked the whole world down um although you know i was of the impression and it was a false impression that i got my my eyes fairly wide open i hadn't <laughs> um but i i knew from day one that it was bs it didn't make sense. I absolutely, at no point did I ever think that there was a deadly virus that was going to kill us all. There was something about it that just made no sense whatsoever. And I had an inner knowing that that was the case. I didn't need to, I didn't need to consult anything other than to consult myself. I knew. And, um, you know, <laughs> nothing I've seen subsequently has changed. It's changed my exactly. opinion. Exactly. But to be it. I suppose, Mike, when you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose when you've had years, years and years of natural medicine, homeopathy, um, becoming more and more aware, the minute this thing came up, I thought, well, whatever it is, it's, it, I don't, you know, I never get. If I get the flu, I take echinacea, I take vitamin C, I get well, end off. I was yeah. in an old people's home. I loved it. And then they started bringing in all this madness. And one day they told me I had to scrub, uh, wash everything with uh, Dettol. And I looked at her and I said, why? You know, there's, nothing, there's nothing there. And they reported me. And bit by bit, I became a threat. And in the end, they sacked me, you know, because I was so, I couldn't bear it to be there anymore. But when you're awake, it's, you can't undo it. No, you can't. And I mean, when this happened, it was so outrageously stupid, the whole thing, that it was obvious that it wasn't real. Yeah. It was obvious. Something, as you say, because you and I, we've been waking up for years and years and years, and suddenly it was like, nah. I, I, I'll tell you, I, I thought I was awake, or, you know, relatively speaking, I thought I was awake five or six months ago. Um. But I'm wide awake now. Mm. Wow, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a journey. I feel like I, I had no interest in politics whatsoever. You know, last year and, and beyond, and not not the slightest bit of interest in politics. But wow, it's the biggest game in town now. It's absolutely fascinating. I know. And 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 <laughs> it can be way behind because you know things are happening so quickly at the moment. Mm. Um, but now I, I feel like I've been through a crash course in world affairs, the, you know, the past four or five months. And it's, it's been fantastic. It's been absolutely fantastic. I know so much more now than I did then. But until you, until you get to know stuff, you don't realise how much you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still learning every, every single day. Every single day. So um, where you're living... How are the people around you? Do you have? Do you find that people are actually starting to listen? Are they walking uh, around with plant pots, as Baba Bertha would say, and space suits and goggles? No, you know, I'm I'm pretty lucky, um, even though I don't believe in luck. Um, but now, very few masks have been in evidence today. Um, there are more masks in evidence in supermarkets now because of what's supposed to be coming in on Thursday, which is another joke. The police have already said they can't enforce it, but still, people comply. And yeah. beyond me, it's supposed to be Absolutely. happening on Thursday. Sorry, I don't know anything about. You know, I don't watch anything. Okay, well, supposedly you're going to have to wear a mask to go into a shop as from Thursday the twenty fourth. Oh, no, okay. sorry, Friday, Friday the twenty fourth. I apologise. This is in the UK now, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that, because interestingly, I wanted to connect that in some way, because I watched that conversation you had with Charlie, Charlie Ward. I mean, how, okay. how did you come across Charlie? How did you meet him? I, I, was lucky, I, I, I was lucky enough to meet Charlie when I was, I think I was one of his original 37 subscribers. Okay. And uh, I met him through a friend of a friend. I, I'd never heard of Charlie up until, I don't know, probably February this year. Um, but what a blessing he's been to so many of us, eh? He's amazing. Yeah. And, and again, he's been through so much suffering. You know, this is what I'm saying is, I, I kind of think that 
us we're star seeds and we came here to suffer so that other so that we could wake other people up not being humble you know like someone like um jesus i believe was a man who came here and he suffered in order to wake people up and now there's millions of us that are going through similar experiences and we're all being crucified <laughs> we're all being crucified. I, I agree with everything you say apart from i haven't suffered <laughs> You haven't suffered. Wow. You could, so explain to us then, how, how can you stay in such a great space with everything that's going on around you? Or do you have the, you say it's gratitude. Uh, let, let, let me qualify when I say I haven't suffered. I've been very peaceful within and I haven't felt hardly anything in the way of stress. However, I felt distress at some of the things that I've found. Mm. And you know what I'm talking about, you know, about, about what's been happening with the children. so many children, which oh. it, it's, it's, <sighs> was beyond my mm. imagination to believe that anything like that could ever happen. And then to find out it's, happening, it's been happening for so long on such a humongous, massive scale, um, I was truly shocked. And, and the whole world is, is going to be truly shocked. Um, but I've always had this knowing that things are going to be okay. I don't know where it's come from, but I've, but I've had that. And I, I guess, you know, being in touch with Charlie has, has, has really helped a lot because, you know, he's, he gets a lot of information. I know he's got a lot more information than he can let on at the moment. Um, but... Fear tends to disappear when you get an idea of what the truth is. It's the unknown that causes fear. And uh, I don't know, I've just, I've just had this certainty throughout that none of this is going to happen, and I really don't believe it's going to happen. But I also do truly believe that it's, uh, it's the duty of all of us to step into our power individually and come together collectively. Because this is, yeah. this is a an amazing opportunity for the men and the men and women of the world to put all our differences beside, behind us and truly come together as one. Yeah, it's, um, it, it is, it's a time to be able to say, right, it's been happening from the beginning of time with children. I mean, the royals, from the beginning of time, they would marry off little children to uh, old men to send them off to get another country. And the Maasai tribe who I met, I was very lucky to meet, said, wow. Chief Joseph, I met him in America um, a couple of years ago. I did a, a film about him. Amazing man, uh, created an orphanage for all these little girls to save them, to stop them from having to be married off. So th what's been happening to kids has been happening from the beginning of time. And now, for the first time, the voice of the world is getting so strong. I, I think um, a lot of people have been abused. I, I, think, I actually think it's the majority of the world now that have been abused as children, either physically, emotionally, or sexually. Uh, yeah, the majority yeah. of the world. And how could that be? How could it be? And yet, but that is what's happening. A lot of those children have grown up. I'm one of them. Um, I think you probably, you were lucky. You didn't go through anything like that, did you? No, I didn't. I was, I, I, you don't realise how lucky you are at the time. <laughs> but yes, looking back, how You're very wow. lucky. I was very, so lucky. very lucky. Yeah. Um, but we are the ones, I think, that, that are going out there and creating the change. So those, that, those have come through. The survivors, a lot of them are going out there now and creating like I am, like a new TV station, new media, not afraid to tell our stories because if you, because we're coming through, we've come through. And so it's our job to, to wake everyone up, to explain to them, this has got to end. But I never for one minute believed the level it was on. I mean, I started to wake up to this stuff when I was in a wheelchair. I had a serious accident four years ago. With my father. You had one. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you say after when you were in a wheelchair? What did yeah, you say? yeah. For, uh, four years ago, I had a, an accident, a serious accident. 
I broke my leg and I was in a wheelchair for four, four months. My whole family cut me off after dad died, ended up in a wheelchair. Um, my lovely family cut me off. Yeah, lovely, lovely people. In the wheelchair, people don't want to know as well. But, you know, that's another thing. But that's when I got the opportunity to start to watch YouTube. And I started to watch this stuff. I was like, come on, this is a joke. You know, SRA and all and that. Nah. But then bit by bit, it started to become like, I started watching Liz Crokin and then Peter Gett. And I did my own investigation. I thought, hang on a second, this is not going away. If this was a joke or a hoax, this would have gone away ages ago. It's getting stronger and stronger. Then someone told me, a friend of mine told me about John Wedger because he only lives about an hour away. John Wedger, he's the one who's... Is, yeah, what a fantastic you know, guy, John Wedger. Amazing. Absolute hero. John Wedger, I've got to ring him up. So I rang him up. We had a conversation on the phone. This is even before I started doing all this work and he, he told me more. And, and my gut said to me, that, you know, there's something wrong with Hollywood and, and celebrity culture, because I know I could never get any work. I was touring as Edith Piaf, Maria Callas with my theatre, sold out Edinburgh. And I was telling people to recover from medication, uh, to recover from uh, BPD without medication, go on the stage. And I was telling everyone how lucky I was. They wouldn't put me on anywhere. They would not put me on anywhere. So bit by bit, it got worse and worse. Couldn't perform anywhere. And I thought, Something's not right. Something's gone wrong. These people, they, they've created an empire, like the Greek and Roman empire. They've got gods now. And what the hell is going on? And bit by bit, it started, I thought, they'll do anything for money. Like the family who cut me off and dad and from my dad, you know, and whatever, my history. They do. Some people would do anything for money. Yeah. And that's when it started to become obvious to me. And I'd have fights with people that didn't want to listen. But then, and then I thought, as soon as Trump got in, the whole of YouTube got saturated with this stuff. I thought, that's, that's interesting. I thought Trump was the bad guy. And then I started to question all of that. How come all of this stuff is coming up now Trump is in? Oh, he must be doing something. And so my awakening got bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, yeah, I, I, I too bought the mainstream media version of Trump. Mm, in the beginning, I remember... But then I didn't. I tell you why I didn't buy it. I'm not telling you how old I am. You're going to guess now. <laughs> Go on, I've told you how old I am. No, I wouldn't. Don't, I don't talk about my age. But um, when I lived in Israel, we Begin got in. Okay, I was very young. Begin got in, and we all said that was going to be the end of it. We there's going to be massive wars, and we're finished. Begin made peace with Sadat. And that's when I thought, everybody was saying, oh, uh, that's it, Trump got in, he's going to blow us all up. And I thought, hang on a second, that reminds me of Begin. Yeah. <laughs> and he made peace. And we had this ship called the Voice of Peace with A.B. Nathan. Did you ever hear of him? It's, it's, sorry, there was some noise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, I'm going to move, because there's quite a okay. bit of noise. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, what? I said that we had the Voice of Peace with A.B. Nathan. Uh, it was a ship on the water. The same time as Begin got in, there was no more wars, no more bloodshed, peace in the Middle East. I'll never forget it. It was, you know, the mantra. And he was a terrorist. Begin was a terrorist. And everyone said he was going to, that was going to be the end. There was going to be massive wars. And he ended the war with Sadat. And he had Camp David and everything. And that's when Trump got in. My, my subconscious said, or something said to me, do you remember when we thought Begin was going to annihilate everyone? Was it, well, maybe Trump is the opposite of what everyone is saying. And well, in <laughs> fact, that's one of the big <laughs> from the last six months or so. Whatever we've been told in the past, flip it 180 degrees. Mm, yeah. You're a lot closer to the truth than what we've been told it was the truth. Exactly. So, Most things that we've been told are the absolute opposite. It's so exciting talking to you. It's like having a conversation here. But as you know, I, I do want to get a little bit more to the situation with the mass. So in Spain, from what I know, Charlie told me, he says that he's got asthma. And he, go, he goes into the shop and says, I can't wear a mask. And the idiots say to him, punch a hole in the nose and the mouth. And <laughs> have they lost their brain, Mike? I mean, come on. <laughs> 
Michael Burton said, wear a plant pot. Yeah, wear a plant pot, it's got holes in it. Anyway, so from what I know, um, they became mandatory because of the tower. Is this something to do with the 5G? But my understanding is that Marbella is the, um, the surveillance hotspot of Europe. Uh-huh. I think, uh, the, I think the figure quote is they've got 85 high-definition security cameras, which, uh, which they want to test to see if, uh, the, the, with facial recognition, to see if the facial recognition works with masks on. So, so we can, can use as explain that to me? Sorry, can you explain that to me? I don't understand the connection. How can wearing a mask help with facial recognition? No, it doesn't. But that's that, that, what they're testing is whether these high definition facial recognition cameras will work when people are wearing masks. Okay. But that so okay, so they want to know if you wear a mask, it will it will be easier to do facial recognition. Is that what you said? No, no, not easier, but if masks and obviously this isn't gonna happen, but if masks were to come compulsory. Would the, would the facial recognition cameras still work? Oh, so oh, I see. It's an experiment. Yeah, we're, we're, we're guinea we're pigs. guinea pigs. Yeah. Of course we are. We've always been guinea Oh, I see. So, so every time they make a country mandatory is to check whether the facial recognition will work with a mask. Yeah, but, but, but there's one more thing. Um, oh, well. We need to be kept apart for facial recognition techni technology to work. Hence, and why is that? Distancing. Why is that? Why do we need to be kept apart for facial because, recognition to work? Well, I know certainly for, with the initial facial uh, recognition uh, software that's been used in the military, um, it couldn't distinguish between an individual and a group of individuals if two people were less than five feet apart. I see. Okay, and of course, so, that's but, uh, actually more facial part of their culture. Tracking software as well. Tracking Pardon? technology. Can you say that again? I said more. In addition to facial recognition, it's also tracking uh, technology and software. Right. But they have to keep us apart from each other, not side by side, for it to work effectively. Okay. So they started off with the six point something, which of course is the number six is very important to them. As yep. Bob Arthur said, it's six, 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 two, two, two. Um, okay. Um, and then they made it a smaller distance that you can actually be a little bit closer. So they can still test this facial recognition. If yeah. it, but you just and, need to be a little and, bit. Hey, I, I'm not totally up to speed with the guidelines because I don't watch the news. Um, so, some. <laughs> Somebody from another country, I can't remember where it was, they asked me about two or three weeks ago whether we were still on lockdown. And I honestly couldn't answer them. I hadn't got a clue whether we were or not. I never went into lockdown, did you? No, I, <laughs> I haven't restricted myself in any way, you know, apart from there's nowhere open to go. But yeah. in, you know, in terms of personal freedom, I haven't restricted myself at all. I've gone out when, whenever I wanted to. Exactly. And you'll never catch me in a mask, Lauren. Never, ever, ever. I'll wear a plant pot. <laughs> <laughs> no so carry on anyway carry on this is fascinating because this is really important to give out um that's all i know really <laughs> 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 okay okay i, I, I don't so, think there is much else to know to be honest okay but then it's another it's another means that they meant to bring in to absolutely control us and obviously okay. the end game for deep state was uh was massive world depopulation. Yeah. Because they, 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 any... they wanted to do it with this. Mark Steele talks about it all the time. Yeah, and he as this, well. But that's a needle going into an arm, by the way. And the needle, of course, yeah. yeah. And and it's incredible to see so many people when you watch the hatred towards uh, you know, I don't believe Bill Gates, whoever his name is, I, I think he's some kind of uh, microchip. I honestly don't feel that's a real person anymore. I, I can't bear to look at him or his, um, no, is it his wife or his husband? I'm not quite uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. We don't but I, I can't bear to look at either of them. Uh, I know. So, um, okay, so this is fascinating because it's a completely different way of looking at things. Because, you know, even people that I 
respect that one, they don't wear a mask. Somebody said to me today, and I, I just didn't understand how they could say it, is um, if I sneeze um, near someone, will they catch the virus? And I thought, oh, geez. Wow. When I, it says on the government website, it's out there, everyone can see it on March the 20th or something. March, oh, they like to say that. It, was a, it was about four days before lockdown. They downgraded, downgraded the severity of so-called COVID-19. Exactly. I say so-called because it's never been isolated and it's never been proved to cause whatever it's supposed to cause. It's unbelievable. And, and not only that, I kept questioning um, because my husband works at the airport and of course he can't go to, he doesn't go there. He works at duty free and, you know, nothing's going on. But there were 100,000 people a month coming into this country and none of them were tested. They just walked right in. They kept and people going on planes with masks. I mean, that's dangerous. How can you wear a mask sitting on a plane? And I, you know, to you and me, this is common sense. It's a bit like this is a hard drive, you know, this is a blender, this is hair. <laughs> so, but these people, you can't, they live in a different world, in a different dimension. I, I just don't understand how people can be so stupid. Let me, let me, let me tell you a very quick story. Yeah, go I was on, in something funny, hopefully. Week, and there was a guy came in, he had a really funky mask on, yeah? <laughs> and uh, he, start, he, he said something to me and, you know, I said something back and then I said to him, uh, I said, you know, this is the, th the thin end of the wedge, don't you? Um, you know, it's going to be the mask first, then the, uh, the vaccine identification certificate and then it'll be the microchip. And he said, yeah, it's scary, isn't it? I said, well, I'm not scared because it's not going to happen to me. Um, he said, but uh, he said, yeah, I don't feel well wearing this mask. He said, it's difficult to breathe. I've been getting headaches. I just haven't felt well. So I said to him, so why, tell me why you're wearing it. And he paused for a couple of seconds and said, I don't know. Oh, no. And, I, so and he, sad. He, he, he left the shop. I saw him about an hour later. Well, I saw this guy coming towards me an, an hour later with a big smile on his face. And it was him without his mask. Oh, and I said, incredible. where's he gone? And he said, well, you asked me a question. I couldn't answer it. So it made me think. And I've taken it off. Yay! Do you know what? It's incredible when you can do that. I went into the high street uh, a couple of weeks ago. I very rarely go anywhere because I can't bear to go out around people. So, do you know what I mean? But there was this woman, and she was obviously she was had some kind of mental health issue, and she was wearing latex on her mouth. And I went up to her and I said, "Sweetheart, this is going to make you sick." And then I told her a little bit about my history and she looked at me, took it off and put it in the bin. Fantastic. And, and that is so incredible because you've saved a life or, you know, I think it's a lot of people can be um, chameleons. And if, if they don't know any better, they'll do what a stronger person will tell them to do. So if you're living in a peer group where someone is telling you to wear a mask and they're a bit stronger than you, you'll go along with it. You won't do any research. You'll just go along with it. Well, I, I, I truly believe that most people are too lazy to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. They like somebody else to do the thinking for them. Yeah. Or they do, I think a lot of people are just in trance. And I really do think that the media, um, as Ma Martin, my husband's a hypnotherapist. And I, I really, you know, like they've got this TikTok thing. So in a way, they're telling us that they're putting you in trance as well. You know, Boba Bertha, make a yeah. movie that one but media i i really do think that they've got they're doing subliminal messages oh actually undoubtedly undoubtedly France. and have been for many years yeah yeah mockingbird isn't it mockingbird? mockingbird yeah there's a reason why they're called television programs isn't that yes of course and i call my programs programs but they're positive and they're enlightening and they're yeah but positive pro programs Not always yeah. positive but enlightening and okay coming back to you now when you said this is an interesting one someone might be sitting there thinking when you said to this guy i'm not going to get uh, i'm never going to get this you know business i'm never going to go through that how how can you help a person that doesn't understand how to say no when you said that, 
that I'm never no. having it. There are two things to me here about the realization of how much power that we all have. The first one and the most powerful one is the, the spiritual aspect of ourselves. When we realize who we truly are from a spiritual point of view, that uh, I, come to, I came to know 20 years ago, not believe, but know that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We are the universe, God, infinite intelligence, divine mind, call it what you may. We're, exper we're, we're the universe experiencing itself. Because we come from the world of the absolute, where there is only love and light. And um, to truly experience, you, you need to... I think you need to know darkness before you can truly know light. You need to know fear before you can truly know love. So we come into the world of the relative to, um, to experience all that we can. So that, that from the spiritual perspective, that is so empowering. And um, I, I used to live in fear an awful lot of the time. I don't live in fear these days. Because and the ter the big turning point for me was losing my fear of death. As soon as I lost my fear of death, I lost my fear of life. That's what I was going to ask you: is if, if we didn't have the fear of death, then no one could do this to us. There could be no manipulation. So, how did you lose your fear of death? By realizing there's no such thing as death. How did you get to that level? Well, our physical body dies. But at our core, at our soul, at our spirit, we're all eternal beings. But you say that, Mike. And but how how does the person get to that level again? Because my dad always used to say, he said no one's ever come back. <laughs> and he would always go, you know, this is it, Lauren, boom, boom, on the earth. Once you're in there, you're in there. Now he knows different, he's moved on. <laughs> But honestly, I mean, people are terrified of death. And that's what the media is using. They're using the fear of death. They're telling you you're going to die if you go outside and breathe beautiful oxygen or, or go near a human being. And they're, they're taking away or, 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 you know, singing the core of our, our spirit. Or, or laugh or have any fun. Don't, don't, don't bother boosting your immune system. You know, just wash your hands and wear a mask and clap. Yeah, That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you see, this is fascinating to me because I, I'm, I don't, I'm scared of death. I'm you what's up? I'm scared of death. <laughs> and a lot scared. Of death, I, I'm not scared to die to, for what I believe in. This is different. I would stand up for a child. I would. I would do anything to, I, I cannot bear the thought of this world not changing. Now, somebody invited us out to dinner. And they think Trump is terrible and they're not red pilled. And one of their friends, he, he, he made trillions out of mixing chemicals for Big Pharma. And, and my husband said, will you go to dinner with them? I said, I'll pour the dinner on his head. How can I go to dinner? If it's not change, 20, we work 20 hours a day to try and get people to wake up. And you expect me to go up if the dinner will be on his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand exactly where, where you're coming I can, from. I would die rather than seeing our world not become a beautiful new world with Masara and Gisara, equal opportunities. I want to work and earn money. I've never been allowed to do that. I was blocked. Yeah. And to see our children, I wanted to adopt. It wouldn't let me and Martin adopt. And look what they're doing to children. It's like, I cannot. I would. I would die for that. I would die. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would go to the limit for this because it's it's so important. And when you stand up for what you believe, bugger the consequences. Yeah, you know the consequences don't come into it when exactly. it comes to power. Exactly. Standing up for what you truly believe in, and uh, not. I'm not doing it for me. I'm, I've got two kids, and I'm doing it for them. Yeah, of course. You know, I I don't have kids, but to me, I'm trying to be mother to everyone you know to yeah, I think from what I'm thinking of your energy like doing it, children. You, you just shine you really do <laughs> so that, that's, the spiritual <laughs> power. that's the spiritual power that we've all got yeah yeah but we've also got a lawful power 
And um, we've all been conned, we've all been lied to from birth that we're tied into this system that is corrupt and fraudulent. And in the UK, it's called the UK Government Limited. We're all, which isn't a government at all. <laughs> the government as we know them are the, the board of directors of a private service corporation with which we have no contract. Mm. But we're told we have a contract. Ooh, your picture's gone. I've lost you, Lauren. You're back, you're back. Yes, yeah, I've just been, my, my, my phone's nearly out of charge, I'm sorry. Oh, we're so going to have to meet. You don't live that far. I mean, come on, we can meet in the middle. So. Yeah, okay. Um, the, but let me just... <laughs> let me... A very quickly, if you want, just very quickly to give a message to those people that are terrified for their lives, just something easy that may click, just a, a message, anything, anything. Okay, let me ask you this question. If you hadn't seen the news and read the papers and been aware of what was, what was being fed to us, would you have known that there was a, there was a world pandemic? If I hadn't seen the news or anything and didn't see social media or anything like that, yeah. no, if I was a hermit, no, no anything. No, not if you're a hermit. No, I don't know anyone who's had it or anything. You know, are the black crosses on every door? Are people dropping down in the streets? No. I don't know. I don't know anybody who's had the flu this winter. I, yeah, they've. Had that, is it's the blood flu? Because the thing is, everyone I know has healed it with vitamin C and collodial silver. And, you know, I think we probably had it in the beginning. But so basically, the answer is switch everything off. It's just, uh, just uh, meditate. Not switch, the, switch the news off and look behind the curtain. Because okay. what we get from the BBC and every other form of mainstream media is pure and utter bullshit. Yeah. Lies and deceit. And it's the biggest atrocity ever carried out in the world. Because they're owned. They're owned um, by this 1%. But they'll yeah. go. And moving on TV, we'll on there. I have got to get on that box. Do you know what? They quoted me £600,000 for 20 minutes to get on the real box, to get in front of the masses with some fun, happy news, positivity. £600,000! Well, I think a bit, Bill Gates was interviewed on the BBC a couple of months ago, and I believe he paid just over two million for 17 minutes. Bill Gates had to pay the BBC. <laughs> yeah, he paid the bit. I think it was 2.1 million he paid them in exchange for a 17-minute interview, which wasn't an interview at all. He was just fed questions by whoever it was to set him up for the answers that he wanted to give. Yeah. It was the most pathetic piece of journalism I've ever seen. Unbelievable. You and I and Charlie were better journalists than any of them because we come from here. We're from right from the gut, not afraid to ask the questions. And hopefully at some point there will be more light workers on there. So people, they'll, they'll just say, hang on a second, I can't talk to that. I can't say it anymore. This is bullshit. I'm walking. And, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's got to happen. It's spreading like wildfire. And, uh, and that's, that's going to be the role of you and I and people like us, Lauren. It's I can't legal. wait. No, nor me. Bring wait. it on. Bring it on. I feel Pardon? like I was born for this time. Pardon? I feel like I was born for this time, right here, yeah. right now. Yeah. This is the time now where we've got our work to do. So, Mike, it's been amazing interview, interviewing you, talking to you. Now I can put out a bit more information to people that they, they just need to know and they want to know. All you've got to do is say, I do not consent and go and stand up for yourself and tell them where they can shove their whatever. And by the way, if you've been diagnosed, like most of us have, you don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you your I'll advantage. <laughs> Do part two soon, yeah? Let's do part two soon. We will. I look forward to meeting you. Um, you know, I don't know, they're probably not open. They used to have that amazing place where they did all the salads and stuff in between Birmingham and, and um, us. Anyway, take care. Lots of love, Mike. Absolute pleasure, pleasure, Laura. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Cool. See you soon. Good evening. Lots of love. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Namaste. Bye. Wow. What a great guy. That was Mike Shinton. I hope you enjoyed his story. I thought it was fascinating.
a little seven-year-old, six-year-old child that understands that God can be what he's been brought up to believe. A brave man that's not afraid to say the truth. I hope you got something from that. I hope you got something from understanding what's really going on with the masks. They're not doing this to help you. They're not doing this to keep you well. They don't care about you. They do not care about any of you. Okay? You're just a guinea pig. Like in the Truman Show, you're in a little box and they're playing with you. But you know what? The mouse is roaring and I'm going to leave you with that. I love you lots. Take care and enjoy this beautiful interview. And sign up to Moving On TV. Subscribe, share and like and get all the goodies. All the goodies that we are offering. I'm sure I'll get a sponsor soon for the Lauren Hope Glory Show. In the meantime, you get entered. The sponsorship I'm offering here is you are entered into a draw to win a free hypnotherapy, free tarot reading. Uh, you get 25% of tarot reading off of a tarot reading. Uh, I think that will be the sponsor for the Lauren Hope Glory Show until I get someone else. Lots of love, have a beautiful, beautiful day. And I have a wonderful life interviewing wonderful people like you, unique celebrities. Come on board with me on TV. Bye. A flower, a flower in blue, which she's all around. She lights up the room. We colors, her colors are strong.
treasures to your heart Smile my baby, smile